All right, guys, I wanted to make a little video about these uh, Virgin 243 LS cylinder heads. They're getting ported for a turbo application. Uh, yes, we went ahead and checked everything for cracks in between the valve seats since we had all that fun on those 862 cylinder heads, which turned out to not be cracked. They're basically, on those 862s, it was like just surface cracking that did not go down far enough to affect any uh, coolant loss. And all I had to do was grind this down and buff it out, and they were gone. But, that doesn't necessarily always come true. These are the 243s that we are gonna work up for a fairly high horsepower turbo build. Um, what I do generally is try to get them cleaned off as best I can. I mean, these were not horribly filthy, but I have cleaned them a little bit since I brought them home and then disassembled them. But the valve guides are really tight. They're in good shape. The valve seats and the head are in really good shape. Um, what I had done is start kind of marking these heads to slightly unshroud the valves a little bit so that it'll pick up a few CFM on that end. But generally what I'll do is I will bolt gaskets to the heads, to, you know, to get a gasket match. I'll bolt an exhaust manifold gasket here, intake gasket here, of course, you dike them everything, which is coloring. You can use Sharpie marker if you want. But then you scribe. Always scribe your gaskets before you start any porting process. And hopefully you're going to follow some of the porting theory and logic where you just don't start cutting on a head in areas that you don't need to cut on because that's a bad combo. But I was going to show you uh, what the dicum looks like, what it looks like when you scribe a, an exhaust gasket on and all that stuff. All right, guys, you can see where basically what I did was dicum the half, the three quarters of the port that I'll be porting or enlarging slightly with the blue dicum. Feel free to use Sharpie if you want. Take your exhaust manifold gaskets that you're planning on using Align them exactly with the bolt holes. Snug them down where it cannot move. And just give yourself a reference line of where that uh, um, opening is in your gasket. Because you never want to exceed the size of the gasket. And here's another trick that I've mentioned in other videos. You, all, you don't necessarily want to go all the way out to the line because a lot of your manifolds and headers aren't as big as the opening to this line. So basically what you could end up with is a port that dumps straight into a wall of your exhaust manifold or your header. So you can make this huge. I guarantee if you do a search right now on how to port your LS cylinder heads, you're going to see somebody who has literally just butchered this hole so big thinking they're making their head flow better, but then they've got it blocked off with a stupid cylinder, uh, exhaust manifold or a header or whatnot. It's just ridiculous how people just jump into these things and they don't do any research. They don't do any profiling. No understanding of airflow, none of that junk. They just buy some carbide bits, or I've seen people port with wood bits they bought at Harbor Freight and just start butchering into a head like it's, you know, oh, anybody can do this. I'm just going to cut out a whole bunch of material and make it bigger. That's never a good idea, guys, especially if you're hoping to actually make more power and not mess up a pretty good cylinder head to begin with. You know, the 243s come factory with a, I think they're right at 75cc exhaust runners. That's a pretty doggone good runner to begin with. So just basic cleanup of the roof, you know what I mean? Slightly raising the roof, blending it back into the bowl, 
doing a performance uh, bowl cut and blend with your valve guide shaping, you're going to end up probably between 80, probably 80 to 83 cc, and that's a that's a good size runner for big flow numbers, well over 200 cfm, um, and that's you know not even without considering the boost and all that junk. But you want a good free flowing exhaust port without getting too big and without running into your exhaust manifold or your header flange. So right now, all I've done on these is just start the roughing process of uh, getting the roof raised slightly. Because really all I'm wanting to do is make that a flat, non-curved surface right into the roof or the... Um, backside of the bowl where it you know comes out around your valve guide and comes straight out of the head with the least amount of restriction and the least amount of turn that you can produce without making it overly large where it runs into your exhaust manifold or header flange because keep in mind on your exhaust side of your head the gases and the air that's trying to come out of there are super smoking hot and it's going to want to follow the roof of that port. That's why you see uh, raised roof ports significantly outflowing traditional ports because it actually helps. It, it lends to that hot air of your exhaust uh, coming out and getting out quicker with less restriction. So anyway, I just want to show you that on this head. And same difference goes on the intake side of the head let me see if you guys can see that you just basically color it with dicum and if you've watched any of my previous porting videos you don't need to make your opening tremendously large in other words you would you'll want to stay moderate on this size because having a fish mouth or like a port that comes up to here and then opens at the up here is not as beneficial as having one with straight walls that'll just run straight through the port. You know, you never want to fish mouth your openings, but this will be gasket matched or at least worked or opened to work with the gaskets that we're going to use. I mean, if you look at these cathedral ports, a lot of people <clears throat> in the boost community know what these are. These are the Felpro 98016 problem solver metal backed uh, rubber o-ring gaskets. These are the gaskets you want to run when you're building a boosted application with cathedral ports and a, not in an intake that doesn't already have the uh, set in o-ring seals but when you look at these there's not a whole lot of space you know what i mean there's just a very little amount of material that can be removed from this uh, intake opening because they match really well to this style of gasket from the factory so you know what i mean don't waste your time doing a bunch of material removal out here on this opening, you're not really gaining anything. If anything, you're just gonna add a little bit of CC or port volume in an area that doesn't really help it, you know. But you gotta get these things uh, orientated and then kind of give it a little scribe if you can because there's several parts of this port that's already under this sealing surface of this gasket so there's no real reason to go much bigger than this using this type gasket okay guys to properly locate those problem solver 98016 felpro intake gaskets you're going to need to install one of the 10 millimeter bolts that goes to this part of the cylinder head because the gasket actually connects to those bolt heads and holds it up off of that surface. I wanted to make sure and bring that up so you guys weren't misled and mistraced or mismarked 
your uh, gasket, but you got to put a bolt in the nut. It'll self-center itself into a relief in the head. And these, get them lined up on those bolts, the head of those bolts. And they snap right in. And that's how you properly locate that gasket to uh, transfer or identify any of that gasket opening to the surface of the head to do a gasket match or relief. You know, people use a lot of different terms, but I just thought I'd give you guys a little look at that. You can tell there's not a great deal of material, but there is a little bit that can be safely removed without causing any sealing issues in the 20 plus pounds of boost that this combination is going to see. We would like to keep all of that um, contained inside the intake if we could. So anyway, now that's how you put that problem solver gasket on to be able to trace it or transfer it to the port entrances on the intake side. Okay, just so I don't cheat you out of the little details. If you see any shiny scratchings in the blue dicom around the port, that's the only material that was protruding or that you could see by looking straight down into that gasket. So, as you can tell, if you're running those Felpro um, problem solver gaskets, you don't need to take very much, of, if anything, out of the port shape or port opening to have a really good transition into the head. So basically, I'll just clean that up, kind of remove you know that little bit of area maybe at the roof and smooth everything out and blend it into the uh, port, and we should be good to go. So we are working, moving forward.